I've been told I have to speak nice and loud. Can you all hear me? Yeah! All right. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Jim, for the uh, great introductions. And, um, and it's great to be surrounded by friends. Uh, thank you all for coming out today. Uh, I'm particularly proud to have my daughters, Jillian and Janelle, here, my wife, Lisa. Uh, I couldn't do this without them, and uh, every day they put up with a, every day they put up with a lot, so that so that we can do public service. Yeah. One of the great things about being in Richmond is you can press a button, and a teenager will bring you any kind of food you want, <laughs> or take papers you have and deliver them to anyone you want them delivered to. It is a great system. <laughs> Since I've been back in town, I've been trying to get my daughters to implement this system yeah. in my house, <laughs> and I got to tell you, they don't have anything to do with it. <laughs> asking a different question, which is why are we running a third campaign in three years? <laughs> but here we are. I am running for re-election because I want Richmond to work for us. <clears throat> I'm proud of the bipartisan success I've had on a number of initiatives and a lot of the great work we did in Richmond. But I also witnessed in Richmond a battle going on that plays out as good idea after good idea is killed in early morning subcommittees our late night committee meetings. Ideas that would move this state forward are quietly put to rest with barely an audience to watch. This battle is about the direction of our state and the basic idea of governance. It is a lot less a Democrat-Republican battle and much more a fight between problem solving and head in the sand problem avoidance. It's about getting things done versus stalling. The transportation bill that just passed showed us the potential of coming together as a state. But too many good bipartisan bills are killed for questionable reasons. Like Senator Northam's no-cost bill to provide consistent standards for concussions in youth sports across the state. It was a bill that had strong bipartisan support, came out of the Senate with unanimous or, or overwhelming support, but it got to the floor of the House, and it was denied a simple up or down vote. And after about four days of wrangling, they sent it back to subcommittee to be killed for no reason other than the desire to prevent Senator Northam from having a political win. No reason at all other than that. This is the kind of head in the sand stuff that happens in our politics, and it's the kind of thing we have to work against. We should be creating jobs, fighting the sequester, and creating opportunity for people in this state. We have a lot to do. Nobody should be unable to work because they don't have quality health care, and nobody should have to use our hospital emergency rooms as their primary care doctors. We must make health care happen for all now, for the new jobs it creates, and for the opportunity it creates for the people benefiting from that health care. Doing nothing about traffic caused our state to lose its top spot for business in the country. We now have a chance to change that. Clogged roads and packed metro chains should not be the reason people miss family events or the reason businesses choose to move to a different state. We need new transit, buses, and rail, and we need it now. We need to ensure our veterans have access to great jobs and that we are spurring innovation in new companies and investing in clean energy. And it's hard to imagine me not talking about education. But it is time we focus on educational programs that actually work. We must reject magic wand education schemes that promise simple solutions without any kind of hard work. in education. We know that supporting teachers with training, good pay, and the time to do their jobs well works. We know that engaging parents works. And we know that early education works. That is why I pushed for a constitutional amendment to ensure everybody in Virginia has access to quality pre-K. It's why we are all proud of President Obama. for his push for pre-K, and I will keep working on this until we get it done. The battle in 
enrichment is about core ideas like freedom and security, women's freedom to manage their own health decisions, equality for everybody. Making sure, making sure you can't buy a gun without a common sense background check. Ensuring voting is convenient and accessible for everybody in the Congress. Yeah. This battle is the difference between a get it done Governor Terry McAuliffe or a move us backwards Governor Ken Cuccinelli. This battle is about the single moms like mine who raise their kids and hope they can get a chance for a better life. It's about the immigrants in our community working hard to provide new opportunities for their family. It is about the small businesses working hard to grow. It is about the women and girls that have the right to grow up and be in government or run businesses or do anything else they choose. Yeah! It is about our seniors that have so much to give back to our community, about our gay and lesbian friends that simply want the very conservative idea of work, family, and freedom for themselves. It is about our veterans, it is about our veterans who want to keep giving back. It is about all of us in this room, our friends and our neighbors, who want to work together to provide opportunities for our families and leave something to the folks who come after us. Our efforts in Virginia, in Northern Virginia, in this district and around the state will determine which ideas win the battle this year. Whether we solve problems and move forward or whether we stall, delay, and regress. Please sign up to volunteer today, to join us at our monthly volunteer nights, to make calls, to knock on doors, to do whatever you can to make sure the right battle is won. We are going to have a lot of fun this year. I guarantee you that. Let's win the battle, let's make it happen, let's move this state forward together. Thank you very much. <laughs>